Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. I got to break up with you. Oh, again? Yeah. How are you going to do it this time? A text? Again? <laughs> uh, I'm going to do it in the kindest way possible. Well, that'll be nice for a change. <laughs> <laughs> again? <laughs> Next on Men Are So Smart, we're going to break up with you, but we're going to be really nice about it. Okay, check it out. I like it. Well, Skippy, getting dumped is never fun. But people often tend to forget that initiating the breakup can also be painful. Yeah, yeah sure, you're, you're in control, but that doesn't leave you immune to guilt, angst, grief, or some deeply unpleasant combo of the aforementioned. After all, you truly cared about this person at one point you had to have. Maybe you even love them. Maybe you still do. And even worse than seeing someone important to you get hurt is actually being the one to cause that hurt. Yep. Uh, to help you through it, a therapist was asked, uh, a licensed mental health counselor, Samantha Burns, she's a, also a relationship coach, um, how to break up with someone as smoothly as possible during every stage from the moment you decide to end things to the morning phase that follows the split. Or what we call the morning after. Now, <laughs> here are some tips on how you can break up with someone in the kindest way possible, number one. Give yourself and your partner a chance to fix things, okay? So maybe take a step back and see if there isn't a solution to the problem. Because a breakup really should never come out of the blue. Before making a final decision to end the relationship, you should share your concerns or dissatisfactions and try to work through them as a team. Though the decision to call it quits may not be mutual, it's your job to communicate and let your partner know how you're feeling, even if you think this may hurt or disappoint them. I think it's important to include your partner as much as possible in discussions, she says, uh, discussions around your feelings so that a breakup doesn't hit them over the head like a big surprise, which can be not only traumatic, but very confusing. Yep. Uh, next one, pick a location. Uh, if you feel safe with your partner, do it in private where you can take the time to talk through it and answer questions. If you don't live together, break the news at their place so that once you're done and you're ready, you can leave. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, if your partner, however, is a little bit emotionally or physically abusive. This is important. This is key. Consider doing it in public, maybe in front of a police station. Mm -hmm. Maybe inside <laughs> of a police station. Uh, with a friend nearby or even over the phone, That's which is a little tacky, or in a letter also tacky, depending on your specific situation, prioritizing your safety. Next up, brace yourself for feelings on both sides. Let's explain. Be prepared that your partner may be very hurt and in shock and need time and space to process the news and how they'd like to manage communication. You'll likely get emotional too. Your partner was your emotional home, the person that you may have depended on and with whom you shared your life. You likely didn't make the decision to break up lightly, uh, so don't doubt your decision just because you miss them or feel lonely at first. You know, Ron, one of the women in my life from years ago, I may have mentioned this before, I'm not sure, we had a very passionate relationship. Some would say at times fire and ice. And skipping through all the details, I will tell you that when we made the mutual decision to split up, that was it for her. Ooh. She never saw or spoke to me again. You were dead to her. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, um, so, and... You know what, though? Mm, maybe there's something to that. 
That may not be that bad in some cases. Well, yeah, when you think about all the times that you you break up, you get back together, you break up, and then maybe you, you go wine tasting on a beautiful afternoon, and then you get back together, and really all you're doing is this, yeah. back and forth, when what you need to do is right that. Clean or, break. or like I... Magic. Rip the bandage off mm -hmm. to be done with. Well, I'll tell you, when I worked at Saving Center... I dated a lot of the women in there. <laughs> where you worked? Where I, and it's dipping your pen, were you? It's not a good idea. And mm -mm. It, it was frowned upon mm -hmm. and for a good reason. Yeah. Because after you break up, you still have to work with them. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, I had, for the most part, very amicable breakups. And so, hey, we're young. <laughs> It was a, we tried it, didn't work all that well. Let's just move on. Uh, but it's not always that way. And so, yeah, if you can, I'm kind of all for the way she had done it. Yeah. Just ripping the bandage off and it's done, it's over, and I don't even know you anymore. Yeah. Okay, this next one. Yep. This is actually pretty, pretty huge. Make sure you give your friends a heads up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let them know. Mm -hmm. Let a couple close friends know in advance so that they can be there to support you in the transition. Share it with a couple people whose advice or support you value, especially if talking it through with them gives you clarity. Your support system is the, uh, the people who will give you love and belonging when you feel lost and alone. Not only that, but when they see this woman out in public, then they're not stuck in that awkward situation. Hey, I didn't see you with Ron this last week. Where have you been? Yeah. Oh, we oh, broke up. We broke up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, give give people a heads up. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's another thing that I would really recommend as friends of a person who's breaking up. When they come to you and they say, uh, Gina and I split up, and you say, Good, because I never liked her ever. A bitch. And then you get back together with Gina. That's awkward. Problem. <laughs> Problem, my friends. And you know, that's why we do this show. Trust me, number one, it's all about honesty. Right. And number two, we've done the work so you don't have to. <laughs> Got it? We've done all the heavy lifting for you. Trust me, we have. <laughs> Start by being straightforward with this person that you're breaking up with. It depends on why you're ending the relationship, but if you genuinely care and, and respect this person, be empathetic and rip the Band-Aid off with a straightforward statement such as, look, there's no easy way to do this, and it hurts me to know I'm hurting you, but I need to end this relationship. Why? It's not me, it's you. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so, and this next one, I, I think is actually, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty clear. So, explain your thinking. Uh, the best breakup conversations convey clear reasons why the relationship isn't working. Since the hurt partner may waste a lot of time afterward searching for evidence about what went wrong. Uh, rather than point fingers, try to share from your perspective about how you're feeling, whether it's unappreciated, unloved, disconnected, uh, that you have different core values or want different things out of life. Um, boy, I, I can't even think of what I've ever used for excuses for breaking up. I think a lot of times... I'm leaving the country <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah. yeah. Thursday. <laughs> uh, so Friday's not good for me, nor is the rest of my life. But uh, several times I know we were just, we were people on completely different, different levels. And there was no way in hell. I'll tell you one, uh, one woman that I dated, her family, she was unbelievably great. She was wonderful. But when you marry a woman, you not only marry her, you marry her family. Are you listening to him? And her family was a hot mess. And <laughs> they were a dumpster fire. Oh. And so, f through no fault of her own, I I couldn't do that. I knew I wanted to get in law enforcement. and You didn't need that baggage. I didn't need that. Mm -mm. Uh, several of her family members had been to uh, jail 
one of her family members was currently in prison. Um, there was just, yeah, there was no way I could, I could be with that. Ronnie, I'm going to share a story with you that I don't think I've ever told you. Okay. About a breakup, and it just so happens, it's that same girl that I that I just mentioned. Okay. All right, and, and we may get off this topic here for a second, but this is an example of what not to do. <laughs> All right. Um, I was working in Salt Lake City doing a morning radio show there, and the girl that I was in the relationship with was living here in Sacramento. And one night we got into it over the phone long distance, and we decided that we weren't going to see each other anymore. However, the thing that was going on was I had a trip planned from Salt Lake back to Sacramento mm. because my son, my youngest, or now my oldest son, but youngest then, um, to see him. And so she said to me, do you want me to be at the house when you get here or would you like me to be gone? And being a dumbass as I am, I said, well, please not, please don't be there. And um, so she wasn't. I come home and I'm packing some stuff up that I'm going to need. Look at that, Ronnie. I can't move it. Right, right. Um, I'm packing some stuff up and I'm going through the dresser and I come across a box of condoms. Hmm. Now, we were in a relationship, so let's just say, you know, didn't use wasn't, them. Wasn't a necessary piece of equipment. Correct. Okay, so I find this box of condoms. I look at it and guess what? There's one missing. Hmm. I go into a panic. I'm freaking out. Probably because I think to myself, this is not the end of our relationship. I just know this is a rough patch. We're going to get back together. Well, I find these condoms, and I mean, I literally went crazy. I even called my mom. I said, Mom, I don't even know what to do. Well, an hour or so goes by, and I finally calm down. I go, okay, I'm just going to forget about this. I'm going to go back to packing some stuff so that I can take it back to Salt Lake City. I found that condom in a different drawer with a note attached that said, looking for this? Oh, wow. Ooh. That is... That's cray-cray. Okay, well... Stick to your decisions. Regardless of how your now ex responds. If they beg you to change your mind, someone shouldn't have to beg or convince you to love them or be with them. A breakup can be confusing when there's not necessarily something wrong that you can put your finger on or if it's just a feeling. Trust yourself that in the right relationship, your head and your heart will agree and you won't have to choose between them. If they get angry, remember that only you can control your behaviors and emotional responses. Commit to staying calm and realize that anger is a secondary emotion, usually masking hurt, pain, and rejection. After you say what you need to say, if they lash out, remove one's self from the situation with the option to have a final closure conversation after they have cooled off. Yep. So this woman that I was previously talking about, we broke up on Valentine's Day. So you didn't have to get her a gift or a card? So I was thinking ahead there. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and actually I had got her a stuffed animal and it was a little bit, I think it had rained and there was a puddle in her driveway and I tossed it out the window into the puddle. <laughs> I, I don't need it, so here, you can have it. It's going to be wet and dirty, but it's all yours. So about a month later, uh, like the middle of March, it's raining again, and I had been out with another woman, and I come home. I was actually I was in that transition period. I had moved out of Kingsway Apartments right. and waiting for my apartment to get ready on Marconi there. And I was at my mom's house. I pull into my into the driveway at my mom's house, and city sitting on the front lawn it, in the rain is this girl that I had broken up with, and she wanted to get back together. And I'm like, 
okay, that's first of all unbelievably crazy to sit out in the rain. Yeah, really, are you that? Uh, she's a hopeless romantic, I guess. Yes, and she had already, I mean, she had already found somebody when we were still dating, and so. <laughs> That's that's not a good sign. I usually draw the line on dating at that point. <laughs> yeah. So needless to say, I, you know, offered her a towel, stuffed her in her car, and, and sent poured her, her on her way. way. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, breaking up is never easy. Um, it doesn't matter which side you're on, the break upper or the break uppy. Yeah. I think we just coined a new phrase. <laughs> we do that here. Uh, you know, you got to try to take the other person's emotions um, into consideration when you do something like this. Uh, if you're involved in a relationship and you're not committed to it, get out. Yeah. Um, you're not doing yourself or them a favor, really. Um but I also will tell you, you may have one that got away. True. Yep. You just never know. Life's funny that way, huh, Ronnie? Yeah, kind of is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems, sometimes it seems a little cruel. If you look back and think, wow, I we had it pretty good. Uh, and I'm not going to say, I, I think I've got it great now. I don't think I could have done any better than I, than I did. But yeah, you, it's it's hard not to reminisce a little bit and think back about previous relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, this next one on the list, huh? it's it's very similar to one we've all already talked about, but it's something we didn't have to worry about back in the day. Make a game plan for social media. <laughs> oh, geez, that's right. I hadn't thought about that. Yes. You know, it's true because damn, I don't think Facebook pictures ever go away. I think they're so on either. there forever. Uh, you yeah. can't delete them. No. So this says uh, if it's an amicable breakup, you may want to agree on a day to change your relationship status. <laughs> yeah. So it gives you both time to share the news with friends and family before they see it publicly. Yeah, you don't want them to wake up to that. Like, what's this? <laughs> I had no idea we broke up. <laughs> Gee, he could have said something to me. After this point, you may want to uh, block, remove, or unfriend uh, for now, since no one successfully goes from lovers to friends overnight. And remind yourself you can always add them back when and if you're ready for such a platonic friendship. Consider deleting images, which I said I, I'm not sure how you can do that. I don't think you can. And saving them to a flash drive that you can put out of sight <laughs> and out of mind. And out on the yard on Wednesday mornings to be picked <laughs> up. You don't want that laying around. No. Hell no. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we've never been in that situation where we've had to change our relationship no, status. No. <laughs> uh, if I change mine tonight, I think my wife might have a problem over the weekend. There could be. Yeah, I yeah. think there could be. She'd wake up to it. Well, this the section of the garage is always available for you. All right. Thank you, Ronnie. I yeah. appreciate it because you know it's so nice and freaking warm in here. Yes, it is. We're all bundled up. Finally, if you're having second thoughts, give yourself time to know for sure yeah don't do that pinball thing back and forth yeah regretting the breakup is different than missing your ex that's important i'm gonna say it again regretting the breakup is different than missing your ex it's normal to miss someone who was a huge part of your life but regret which we just did an episode on <laughs> regrets suggests you realized you made a big mistake or the circumstances around the breakup have changed. Maybe you'd no longer have to do long distance or one person is better able to prioritize the relationship. If you regret the decision, it may be worth it to have a conversation with your ex, but wait at least three months post breakup to make sure these feelings don't pass and be prepared to discuss. Ronnie, time is time is the healer of all. Yeah, it really is. Um, now, I mean, it's when when we used to break up with people, the toughest part was, well, who do I call on the phone now? And I remember we had uh, one phone in our house, but two outlets, one in the kitchen and one in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And I had gone out and bought like a 50 foot cord. Yeah. So I could take the phone into my room and close the door and have talks with my girlfriend on the phone. I don't think that happened. I don't think people talk on the phone for hours anymore. 
They uh, do when they're going into a store for some reason. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the only time. Yeah, or when they're ordering just before as they order fast food. Uh, but it is that that part is a little bit. It's like, wow, what do I do at this time now? When you for hours, man, I remember talking to my girlfriend for hours on the phone every night, and then suddenly that's a part of your life that is gone. What do you fill it with? Did you miss the time on the phone, or did you miss the person? You know, yeah, I'm not really sure. It's hard to say. And you, I, cause, you know, you create a habit after right. three weeks of doing something. Right. And a habit is much different than a relationship. It is, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a relationship should be. <laughs> is something that grows. Yes. A habit is something that becomes mundane. Yeah. All right, that'll wrap up this episode. Um, as we mentioned in the beginning, this is from a uh, therapist who gives advice on breaking up with people. You know the cliche one is as I mentioned, it's 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 not you, it's me. Right. And and when you hear that, just to be clear, it's not it's not them, it's you. It is you. <laughs> yeah. It's all you. Uh -huh. It's just a nice way of packaging it. With right. A nice little bow. <laughs> Have you ever been broken up with in a horrible way, or a hilarious way, or? Do you have a story that might top the one that I told today? Oh, man, please throw yeah. it in the comments. Please do below. You'll oh, find it. We man. look forward to it. Ronnie and I yes. read them all. Yep. You know, I, I notice this, too, a lot of times with uh, people in the media. They post something, and then a bunch of people will comment on it, but you never hear back from that original poster. Right. That doesn't happen here. No. When you post a comment below, one of us or both of us will get back to you. And it's kind of cool because sometimes we get back to you both individually and you get both of our perspectives right. on a particular and, question. And they they vary widely. Oh, for uh, sure. Uh, I mean, we we have very different opinions on many things. So his response is probably not going to be anything close to my response. Yeah, mine will be brilliant and his will just be, you know, a comment. Snarky. Snarkful. Yeah. But that's it. Sometimes hurtful. Go for it, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. I encourage that. Okay. Uh, if you'd like any more, more information, feel free to uh, find it below. Also wanted to mention that uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to our channel. It's the Gallagher Entertainment Network. The name of the show is Men Are So Smart. And when you subscribe, please click the button next to it because that will give you notifications each and every time a new show comes out.